While it may be cold outside, things are getting toasty warm at Global Voice Broadcasting. Heat up your winter nights with the hottest topics, the hottest celebrities, and today's best music. It's why Global Voice Broadcasting is becoming your 24-7 home for the music and talk you want right now. Discover your favorite shows and music anytime at globalvoicebroadcasting.com. I bought her book, A Hill to Climb. Uh, she's a very inspirational speaker. And I look forward to one day being able to work with her. Your power lies within you. Let it go. Aspiration, inspiration, motivation, edification, determination. These are the keys of life success brought to you by none other than award-winning author, motivational lecturer, business consultant, and much more as she gets you aim to your purpose and now ladies and gentlemen young and elder from hollywood to the entire world here is your host of aim to purpose the radio show louise hicks along with her co-host yours truly kenan wesley mason hello world Hi, everybody. This week, we hope you all had a great weekend. We are so excited about being here. We thank you all for joining us. And as you can see, my voice is better this week. Uh, last week, I was coming up off of the holidays of having laryngitis, and I'm getting better. Not quite there, but I'm almost there. <laughs> but we have a great show for you today, and we're going to talk about preventing and reversing heart disease cookbook today. And we this is really a show from it's a continuation. Uh, continuation show. And um, part my two co host here. <laughs> part two. Co- this is this is Kenan Mason, along with our host, Louise Hicks of Aim to Purpose the Radio Show. We want to welcome all of you all over the world for tuning in with us for part two of this uh, of health discussion from last week with Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn, and it was a great show, if you ask me. Very informative. It was an excellent show. We talked last week about preventing uh, and reversing heart disease with Dr. Esselstyn, Caldwell B. Esselstyn, as Ken said. And this week, we have the continuation where we're going to talk about the cookbook written by Anne and Jane Esselstyn, his daughter and his wife and I tell you I got these books and these recipes it is amazing uh, what they have done here and we can't wait to get them on the phone and share they're skyping in uh, from Ohio and we can't not wait to share with you because it's so important and with this being the beginning of the year that's why we chose to do this show and we're so happy that the assistants have agreed to join us on this continuation part two show because we know a lot of times we make these new year's resolutions and uh, get a little tight tongue there excuse that tongue (laughs) getting in the way but uh, we don't always keep them. And we know that we are a society now where we have so many uh, ailment, ailments and diseases. We are running rampant with the medications and so forth. So we wanted to get you off to a good start and help you to eat healthier. And uh, we're not going to have our, our entertainment and community news uh, today. Uh, Shamika Brown, our entertainment and news correspondent, known as Mika the Diva, is out gathering information. And she's going to be back on the 26th of January with some great scoops that she uh, will have uh, found out about, and we'll let you know then. That's right. So with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and have Ken to give us some information about Anne and Jane, and then we'll just jump right into the show and start talking about Uh, how to eat healthier so that we can live longer and live happier. Yes, it is it is the best time uh, to start fresh and uh, just to get the information out so the people can make their own decision on 
what's best for them. I think uh, what the Esselstyn family is doing is great. So with that being said, Anne Kryle, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Esselstyn is a relentlessly energetic and creative advocate for the plant-based whole food way of life. She has devoted herself to inventing recipes to prevent and reverse heart disease in support of the research of her husband, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn Jr. Anne never stops looking for ways to bring that important agenda to delicious life, devising ever more practical and powerful ways to shop, cook, and engage even the most reluctant eaters in the plant-perfect diet. Anne is the author of the recipe section of Dr. Esselstyn's best-selling book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, which you just uh, saw my mom hold up, and the co-author of the, Pre the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook with her daughter, Jane Esselstyn. She is a graduate of Smith College and holds a master's in education from Wheelock College. And taught English and history for 27 years at Laurel School in Cleveland, Ohio, where she received the uh, Hostetler Award for Outstanding Teaching. At the same time, she juggled uh, the raising of four children when not in the kitchen and counsels patients, lectures around the world on how to prepare and eat plant-based foods, and spends time with her 10 plant-based grandchildren. Jane Esselstyn is a fresh and charismatic voice on the plant-based whole food diet. She brings her perspective and passion as a longtime health and sexuality educator uh, to creating on-ramps to the uh, plant-based way of life. Jane is an avid and inventive designer of plant-based recipes and the co-author of the Prevent and reverse heart disease cookbook with her next door neighbor and mom, Anne. Jane has worked as a science, outdoor, and health educator for over 25 years. During her years teaching sex ed uh, to middle school kids, she has developed a, a powerful curriculum around healthy sexuality and development in the digital age. A tireless champion for kids and their health, Jane brings remarkably clear, uh, remarkable clarity, compassion, and humor to the most difficult conversations for kids and parents alike. Jane met her husband and fellow educator, Brian Hart, while working as a field instructor for Outward Bound. They have three plant-based children. Jane graduated from the University of Michigan, where she competed nationally as a recruited swimmer and rower, and earned a BS in nursing from Kent State University. So let's have a warm welcome and continue this discussion with Anne and Jane Esselstyn. Hello, Anne and Jane, and thank you both for joining us today. Hi. Well, Thank you Thank for you. having us. Oh, yes. a nice introduction. Oh, Thank yes, you. it was. Well, you, you ladies have done so many wonderful things, and I love this part about you being teachers because I, I do love teachers, and I'm still in touch with uh, many of my teachers uh, back in Louisiana where I was born in Shreveport, and I just love teachers, and I like the fact you said the your plant-based children because that tells me that you are really concerned about your, your children and the fact that you helping the youth in school. I mean, you ladies are doing such wonderful things for the planet, and that's what our show is all about. We are about love, peace, and harmony, and helping people to find their purpose, and to just reach their highest calling in life. And I, I'm just so pleased to have you on the show. And uh, <laughs> it's so funny because when Ken was reading, I was thinking when he said about the uh, you were uh, mother and daughter, and here we are, mother and son. So it's it's like a family it's affair great. today. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it is great. So we love it. And um, we were uh, just talking about uh, at the uh, top of the show about uh, we are continuation from last week's show where we talked to uh, your husband and father, Ann and Jane, about uh, 
preventing and reversing heart disease, and you had a part in the cookbook. And the show was so interesting. We didn't get to anything about the cookbook, but Dr. Esselstyn shared so much uh, information. It was very impactful, very thought-provoking, and it gives uh, us a lot to think about. And now we're going to get into the cooking part. And, I mean, I'm so excited about this. So, I mean, what really got you to thinking about this and deciding to eat plant-based? And before you answer that one, let me ask you this. Did you ever eat anything else like the, the with uh, face and eyes, I should say? The standard American <laughs> diet, if you will. Anything with a mother or a face? Yeah, mother <laughs> or face. That's it. <laughs> Well, we certainly did, but um, now, Jane, you haven't, for most of your life, Jane has not. I, uh, up until like the last 30 years, we've been totally plant-based. Wow. But before that, we were not. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, and, I, and um, my parents started to eat this way because my father wanted to be able to it was sort of a Gandhian approach, like, you know, I'm not going to ask my patients to eat this way if I find I cannot eat this way. Right. So my mom and dad started eating this way um, around 1985, and that was when um, my three brothers and myself were all about 10 seconds apart in age. So all four of us <laughs> were in college, and um, no, I, yeah, one was in high school and the rest of us were in college. Uh-huh. But um, we... So we were kind of still under their tutelage, and so we would come home and, you guys don't eat any, any meat or dairy or sugar or salt or oil. What's going on around here? So we just sort of adopted this way and adapted to this way uh-huh. early enough in life before we'd all, like, totally been off on our own, buying our own food, cooking our own food. So um, it feels like a long time for me, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm 49, and I was 18 when I started, so oh, yeah, it's been wow. about 30 years. But yeah. I think the key thing and for all your audience uh-huh. is, you know, food is medicine. Yes. And this is Anne, right? This is Anne, right? What happens for if you eat well, how your, your medications are gone, your health is it's all different. But what, well, what you've got to do is parents can't be afraid. You're not, they're not going to overnight get all their children to be <clears throat> totally plant-based. But they're going to be a role model, and those children will never forget. And <clears throat> it's surprising how <clears throat> they can, they will change. Yeah, and that's so true, what you're saying, <laughs> Anne. That was Anne speaking, right? Yeah. Because yeah, uh, we are <laughs> our first role model, actually, for our children. And like you said at first, it might be difficult to get used to eating uh, plant-based. And when you first started, uh uh, Jane, you w- said you were 18. Did you think, uh, well, am I going to be able to stick with this? And how did you feel about that? <laughs> no, we all were kind of like, what? But, you know, we <laughs> ate a lot. Of, we ate out of our home most of the time. And we were, we were all athletes. We were all swimmers. Um, and so we, you know, you have breakfast and swim practice and you come home for lunch or maybe you go out to lunch with your friends or something. But, you know, your dinner was certainly at home. And so the majority of what we were eating was you know plant-based and it was it was fine i mean it's it i oddly enough never liked meat growing up so i'm not the best person to ask about that oh okay Um, well this is this is what i would say and that is start with breakfast and we've got some great little beautiful things for breakfast but (laughs) get kids get adults eating oats some way or another right Uh, oatmeal um, you know, you don't need to cook it, and we we have recipes. My husband's favorite breakfast is just the oats, just dry raw. oats, like raw, a horse, not cooked, like a horse. Dry raw. and raw. Raw. Raw, and exactly. Raw. In other words, treat the oats as if they were a like, cold cereal. Yeah, like like they're grape nuts or, or flakes. That's right. Put them in the bowl. Add fruit and maybe some grape nutty type things. And alternative milk, banana, raisins, walnuts if you don't have heart disease. And it's a great breakfast. Yeah. Or you can, I mean, I love things like steel-cut oats. And there's, we have a great recipe in here. You have to, banana, cook, the, you have to cook the steel-cut oats. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but for banana, steel-cut oats. And if you have any little kids that like sweet, a really ripe banana, which I would put a banana in water and blend it. 
they you, use that as the liquid to cook the oats. You know what? I'm oh, glad. I'm glad you brought delicious. that up. I'm I'm glad you brought that up because I, I have a five month old, and right now uh, we're kind of giving her a little taste of bananas and and yeah. and and other uh, you know fruits. We we have her drinking uh, uh, carrot and celery juice and things of that nature, um, but. Banana is definitely one of the better ways to get children started, you know, to get the, that sweet palate kind of activated. Yeah, well, what, and there is one other thing that we uh, talk about in our book uh, a little bit, and, and one of our sort of 12 different uh, tenets, and that is to drink water. Yes. One of the things yes. that is such... Um, makes such a difference is you just please chew your food don't yes. drink your calories yeah and uh you know when kids go off stop breastfeeding their best way to get liquid is water yeah rather than juice yeah that that is really uh wonderful. i mean everybody every adult kids anybody you say you save yourself thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars and hundreds of thousands of calories if you Drink water. Absolutely, yeah. Water is one. So of, easy. Water is one of the uh, one of the fundamental liquids that uh, that most people tend to stay away from. We live in a soda pop uh, uh, energy drink society where uh, too many people fall into that trap, and, yeah. and 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 then years and years later, as the uh, the soda and all of the chemicals that are in diet soda regular soda, energy drinks, which are even worse. They come in smaller cans. And over time, all, uh, the, these different ailments begin to develop and people are dumbfounded of the reasons why when their doctors tell them, hey, you got to cut down on this and start drinking more water. Oh, I don't like water. <laughs> <laughs> no, water should be like the fifth food group. Like you're yes, it really it. Yes. should. But you know, the thing is, when we uh, when we decided to do this book, we uh, this cookbook, the Vent in Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook, is directed entirely at four heart disease patients. So it it it's got a much narrower, no nuts, very little, um, no avocado. It's, you know, no meat, no oil, no dairy, and it's got not a lot of, of soy products. Soy, all soy is 40% fat. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is really one, I mean, it's miraculous, miraculous what people with heart disease or diabetes or, well, or obesity or MS or lots of stuff. But oh, yes. The results they have when they go on this for just even three weeks. It and sure is. The results are stunning. It, it, and it really shocking is. shocking to the point where doctors are like, well, wait, wait, wait. What else are you doing besides changing your diet? They right, that diet right. Is so it, powerful. It is powerful. So powerful. It is powerful. My parents are 79 and, and 81, and they are on no medication, and that is normal. Yes. We're not designed to be on medication. We're uh, not designed to, to need assistance, to be alive. That's and right. You're so, I'm Here's so glad you, that's right. you're saying that... Uh, Rabbits aren't on medication. We shouldn't be on medication. It makes no sense. We are drinking and eating ourselves, well, primarily eating, I should say, eating ourselves into ailments. Yeah. Yes, we are. And I'm so glad you said that, Jane and Anne, because um, we have become a society of walking medicine cabinets here. And it, mm -hmm. it appears that we take a pill for everything. And like you're saying, I am 63, and I was sharing that with Dr. Esselstyn last week. I'm not on any medications either. Now, once upon a time, I had, had, oh, I'm very <laughs> excited. I, I, I had been on seven different medicines at one time because I had developed an illness. And uh, I just became so ill, and I, I had to tell my doctor they wanted to put me on some other things and this and that and I said no I, I grew up in Louisiana where we ate 
more plant-based food than anything because we pretty much grew our food in Shreveport at the time I came up in the 50s and 60s. We did not know what fast food was. In fact, the first time I ate a taco was when I came to California. I didn't know what they were, and this was back in the 60s. I had come out to visit my family that lived out here in California, and I ended up moving here myself after high school and went to college here, but I did not... Uh, eat any most of the food we ate was without meat because first of all my parents couldn't afford it so I know what you're saying is so true and that's why when I was uh, told about you uh, Dr. Esselstyn from Brenda Pierce who uh, shared you with me she and I have been in touch with each other she's been on the show too and uh, she shared this. I ordered the book a few weeks ago. I haven't made any of the recipes, but I'm going to talk about some of them in a little bit. We're going to show a video, and then we're going to talk about some of the recipes in the book. But it, it's so exciting to have you here and hear somebody talk about these things. Like you said earlier, Anne, that um, our, our medicine is our food. And who's that? Uh, 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 Hippocrates, uh, what's what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Hippocrates. Hippocrates, Hippocrates right. Let your medicine be your food and your food be your medicine. And yeah. we just need to um, just put more of this out here to the public so they can be aware because we know we have an epidemic in America with diabetes and uh, heart disease and cancer and o- obesity. It's all kind of stuff. So... Um, what I know you said your book was inspired by uh, some patients, but with you eating this way, do you get your patients, them seeing that you're at what, you know, not that we, we're still youngsters at the way I look at it. So, and not being on any medicine, when you have people younger than we are and their medicine cabinets, do the, does that yeah. help them when you tell the people on your program and um, how you have sustained yourself without medication over the years? Does that help them to to stick to the program and to stay on this plant-based lifestyle? Well, I mean, every the people who have come to my parents' program um, or could get our book to be in line with the program, usually they have had some sort of health problem or they are part of a family where there's been some health problems and they all want to just steer clear of that. Um, and my brother's book, Engine 2 Diet, and my beef with meat, um, are books that are pretty much almost the exact same guidelines, but um, they're aimed at younger people. You know, spring, you know, spring chickens like yourself. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, because we're spring and, chickens. And, and the only reason I say they're a little different is that, and I did all the recipes in my beef with meat um, and some recipes in the Engine 2 diet, and the only variation is that there is a little bit of avocado and sometimes there's nuts. That's the only variation. And it just tells you how dangerous avocado and nuts, any added fat, saturated fat to a diet, affects heart disease patients. But um, they have no problem complying with this diet because the results are so immediate. And some people want to feel, especially sick people, when they feel better, that is such a rush. Oh, yes. To be the locus of control and to feel better and to get off your medication and to be have a, a spring in your step. Yes. Clear-headed, clear-eyed. You're not scared about your heart, you know, snapping clothes on you. Right. It's amazing how empowering it is. And the, but the guidelines, I wanted to share them before you, like, show anything or share recipes. I'm going to just run down our guidelines and read them. Um, they're in, it's the first section of our book, and it's, you know, everything is blown up into little paragraphs. But the quick highlights are, first, eat, we um, advise to eat no meat, no pork, no fish, no fowl, nothing. No animal, nothing with a face, nothing that has a mother. Two, consume no dairy. Nothing that comes from, the, uh, from a cow's breast milk. Right. A cow's breast milk is designed to feed a baby cow. That's right. To gain 60 pounds in six weeks. That's it right. such an overload of protein, carbohydrate, fat, everything. Just what overload. Right. So we don't need to have any of it in our human bodies. Number three, eliminate oil. Any added oil, none. Zero, zilch, no added oil. I don't care what kind of oil. Don't say olive. Don't say anything. Just no. Zero oil. No product with oil added into it. No oil added to a pan. That freaks people out, but it's very easy. Yep. Eat whole grain oats. Eat greens. Eat beans and, le- and lentils and legumes. Eat whole, whole grains. Avoid sugar as much as possible or any sugar-type things. Um, you know, we have to add them occasionally here and there. We use maple syrup on our diet, um, on our 
plan here because it's a so expensive and b it has other nutritional properties besides just being a sugar or a sweetener right and avoid salt as much as possible we have we have no salt in this cookbook i think one recipe has a little bit of tamari which is a, so, a soy sauce with low sodium um, avoid nuts and avocado and coconut number 11 drink water and number 12 read labels especially the ingredients that's what we mean we really want you to steer clear of any added oils or scary sugars or weird names you've never heard of that's right so those are our guidelines and we're happy to expand on, on any of those um, if you'd like um, yes if you'd I'd like to expand you wanted to talk about I wanted to just get these guidelines out there so anybody listening who says, wait, what? Cauliflower buffalo wings? Well, that's why <laughs> I want to well, expand. Well, cauliflower buffalo wings because we like buffalo wings, but we don't want to have, you know, the chicken wing fat, right. whatever, the underarm of a chicken. I don't, even, I don't even know what part of a chicken is part of a buffalo wing. I've never had one. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I wanted to, um, I'm, I was going to ask you to go ahead and give us those 12, but you jump right in there. See, we're reading each other's mind. That's what family is all about. Go. We can read each other's mind. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, um, when you said the, the no dairy in the cow, that makes a lot of sense because uh, you're saying when uh, we should eat what uh, is our own, more or less. And it's like right. when uh, my granddaughter, it's my only grandchild that's five months old. I have no grandchildren except this one, and I'm so happy. And I can only imagine what you've gone through through as a grandparent what a it's just exciting and I just love being a grandmother and I just love my little grandbaby and I, I like the fact that uh, Ken and, and uh, Denise are really uh, taking good care of her health wise and not allowing her she's been breastfed and now they're right. giving her the juices organic juices and making sure they and plenty of water and plenty of water and, yes they well, giving. No, no, she should she should probably have water is not the best for kids well anyway we're, we're not talking about babies but go ahead yeah go ahead <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what, what were you saying no, babies don't drink water. I mean, they drink breast milk, and then, um, you know, they have fortified milk and stuff up until a certain time. Oh, yeah, of course. Not, I mean, not cow's milk, for goodness sakes. No. too much for a child's body. Oh, no. Um, they haven't been given yeah, it. But they, we have given us some water, though. Not a kid you know, said. Yeah, well, yeah, water, because they, they get too diluted. Anyway, I don't, this is not what the show is about. I, don't want to <laughs> I know. That. I know. But keep her but, healthy. Keep her away from all that meat and dairy, please. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And what you said about no oils. Now, I have, uh, I love uh, putting dressing on my salad and I've been looking at this and I said the salad I made a couple of days ago you'd be proud of me because I didn't put anything on it but some uh, little apple cider vinegar and I just made a delicious salad and you know it was really good with the apple cider vinegar well, on it but you can do better <laughs> than that oh we've got such great dressing can't wait to tell you my favorite dressing this is Jane Jane's favorite dressing is three two one you okay. want to hear what it is? Yes. It's three tablespoons balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons your favorite mustard, one tablespoon maple syrup. Stir it all together. It is like luscious coating. It's got flavor and depth and swing. Sometimes I add a lemon or sometimes I add a little bit of white pepper. Okay. It is awesome. Three, two, one. Boom, three, two, boom, boom. one. So easy. Can, can you repeat Open that one more time? Door and you got it all right there. And my favorite it's, dressing, our favorite dressing. It, are these Anne. in the book by any this chance? Are they in the book, Ann and Jane? The yeah, all in the book. We've got. Okay. <laughs> we have about 14 different salad dressings because, you know, salad dressing is so individual. Right. I mean, some people can't stand vinegar. You can just have some lemon. But. What what uh, changed everything for us was when we discovered, we were just fortunate in Cleveland, we discovered a company that made hummus. You know, hummus is chickpea, lemon, and garlic, and traditionally uh -huh. tahini. Yeah. And tahini is ground sesame seeds. So for my husband's patients, he didn't want them to have t sesame seeds or oil. So you can make hummus without, sesame, without tahini and without oil. And it is delicious. We have a number of recipes. But anyway, hummus has become our mayonnaise. And it is the base of a salad dressing that I make, which has hummus, 
It has balsamic vinegar. There's so many different kinds of delicious balsamic vinegars that are infused. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. It's just a whole world of delicious taste. Mm -hmm. And then we have some mustard. And then maybe I'll take an orange and cut out the sections and squeeze the juice or just have some orange juice in there. And we love it. And it's sort of different every night because it can be different vinegars, different mustards, and you can add ginger or other things. So that's one of our sort of... And that uh, sounds so good. And I know I've looked, like I said, I have the book. I, I got it a few days ago. And um, I've been going through it, and I, I saw some. I didn't see the, the um, 3 two, one but I know it's there now, and mm -hmm. I'll be looking for it because oh, it's called, it's I. Jane's Favorite Dressing. Okay, Jane's it's Favorite Jane's Favorite Dressing. Jane's Favorite Dressing. I'll be looking for that one because I just put the uh, vinegar on mine, and I, I it was really good. But then the other thing out of the 12, I just want to highlight a few because I know some people that are listening, they've been on sugar, and they've been using sugar for so long, and all the sweets. And you were saying uh, limit your sugar, and that is so true, particularly with me and my family, especially because uh, they have this saying, diabetes run in families. Now, I don't know about that, whether that's true or not, because my mother's a diabetic, and I have a, a sister and a couple of brothers, but I am not, and I have another sister it, you know that's what it not. Is? Diabetes runs in the hum human race, and it runs in eating habits that's right mm -hmm. and you just you said that it, it runs in your family and your family has a thing about with sugar not 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 the sugars but you, would they like sugar and it isn't necessarily a sugar problem so much as it it's just cleaning up your diet cleaning up your receptors mm -hmm. on your cells and sugar is often paired with oils and um a, a high saturated fat diet so what happens oftentimes with people who have diabetes when they go on a plant-based diet literally think of the receptors on the cell like the drain in your shower or the gutters on your home. Mm -hmm. You start to clear out the drain, clear out the gutter, and everything functions as it should. That's right. The body is suddenly taking up all the uh, glucose, and your sugar levels are going low naturally. So sometimes people who have type 2 diabetes start to go hypo, or their sugars get low, because they're actually responding to food as they should be. That's right. And if they have medication that's pushing it down, they got to be careful and they got to ratchet back the medication as they're on a plant-based diet. But it's so exciting to have their body get to back to the function like the way that the drain should function in a shower, the way that the gutter should function on a house. It's just it's like it just feels so clean and 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 exactly how mother nature made you. That's it's like right. it's like keeping your pipes clean and also uh it allows yeah, your it, it yeah, allows your exactly. in, it allows your insulin to get to the insulin receptors, just as anything else. Uh, diabetes. And the sugar problem though, it tends to be that tends to be paired with the oil in the diet. Right. Oil, meaning any fats. So yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Diabetes is uh, diabetes, heart uh, illness, just like what was presented in uh, Forks Over Knives, and I'm sure in the book as well. Uh, exactly. the, the, all, these illnesses are food uh, based and they food can absolutely yeah. that's right they are they are food food born illnesses right. because I didn't and buy also, you know born in families in the sense that that's the tradition right yeah, that's right inherit eating habits. That's, that's right. it. You said, Louise, you started saying that. Like my family yes, that's what I was saying. But I don't have diabetes, but I don't have some of the eating habits of my family. Like I stopped drinking sodas. Probably my youngest child, my daughter, is 25, and I stopped drinking sodas before she was born. I might have one, mm -hmm. cheat a little bit, maybe once every year or so I might have a soda. I'll bet it doesn't taste very good anymore. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't even have a craving. I haven't had them in so long. Yeah. But like I said, I, I cheat sweet. every now and then. They, they are. And I don't even drink like, them anymore. And for that reason, because I had been told as a child, you know how we are so conditioned by what we are told, that diabetes run in families and I saw my mother suffer and uh, from she's 91 now but she's an amputee and she's gone oh. through all of these things and I'm saying I'm, I'm not going to get diabetes I'm going to cut when I started reading more and doing more research and I said I'm not going to get this so we have to take care of ourselves and, and we stop stop buying into what we are conditioned to believe because if that was the case all of us it's seven of us everybody would be a diabetic I would think if it ran in families but 
but some of us mm-hmm. don't have it, but it's because we eat differently than the ones who did have it. And I think that makes a difference. And I think alcohol might play a role into it, too, as you're getting. Yes, yeah, because that's uh, a lot of sweet. Right. That's um, what I thought. Chad, what you were saying about pipes running clean. Yeah. This also helps everybody's bowels be a good yes. experience. Yes. This is an absolutely experience. Yes. And that's one of the things that people one of the things that people will experience is that they will have regular bowel movements. Some people have a bowel movement once every 2 to 3 days because All they're you so to do is eat <laughs> the way we have in this book, and you are going to be two or three times a day. Yeah, yeah it, that's it right. Change. Hey, and I have to tell you, you know, one of the big things that my husband pushes with all his heart disease patients is to eat lots of greens. Yes. So speaking of sweet, I uh, have to tell you that Jane came up with the most spectacular recipe. Do you have the book in front of you? Yes, I do. I have the book, and I shared it earlier. I have the book. Page 257. Page 257. kale cake with blueberry frosting oh you know like what made it that's interesting you she said turn that right to because it. <laughs> i have i have some recipes marked on the book I, I went through it i didn't get to read everything like i said but that's one of the pages i could turn right to because i have a divider on it and i said i'm gonna have to make this because it's a kale cake with blueberry frosting and i'm gonna hold it up so uh the audience can see it can you kind of Zoom in on this, Let's, Ken. There we go. Let's see. Or you can make raspberry frosting if you see prefer it? the red and green. Over the holidays, I made a red and green cake. It was yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, and it's it's it looks delicious, I tell you. Back, you guys, back it up a little bit. You guys have done such a great job. See it there? There we go. And on uh, th- it, Oh, this cake, uh, it, make, it made me want to cook it and <laughs> eat it right there on the spot. <laughs> it looks yeah, like, it looks, it looks like candy, if you ask me. It's sweet. It's not too sweet. It's kind of like, you know, banana bread or zucchini bread. You know, it's got a little bit of a, a sweet taste, but it also has a, a, yeah, there's a depth to the flavor of it. Like yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks so good. Oil is sweet. Looks and, like candy cake. And that was one of the ones <laughs> I had marked but off. Want, but we have to get to the, to, to the crux of the book, which is to try and get people to really eat lots of greens. Yes. Kale, collards. You know, all of it. Most oh, yeah. Of it doesn't matter. Just all those wonderful leafy greens. Yeah, yeah. they are so and good. Le- any lettuce. lettuce and what we're going to do, uh, Ann and Jane, we're going to take a, a break, and then we want to come back, and I want to ask you another question about the... Um, the 12 and then we're going to go into the greens a little bit more because I want to talk more about the greens. So uh, let's take a break and then we're going to come back and I want to ask you about uh, the nuts and avocados because I I, I love nuts and I love avocados, but I know we we want to just kind of uh, talk about that. So let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Okay, thanks. Hey, folks, it's Ken here. If you or someone you know around the world has a small business, organization, or foundation you'd like to share with the Aim to Purpose audience, showcase it here on our segment of the show called Small Business Monday. The opportunities for people around the world to browse, buy, and use your products and services are endless. We pre-screen all businesses, organizations, and foundations for legitimacy, but because this is a free community service brought to our audience, it's at no cost to you as well. You heard it right. It's absolutely free, and you don't have to pay one penny. How do you like that? You just come on down to the studio and tell the story of your business, organization, or foundation, and give it the praises and accolades you know it deserves. If you're in another part of the state or country, or if you're in another part of the world, you can easily call in or Skype in and do the same. So what are you waiting for? Contact the show's publicist, Shamika Brown, at www.divinebrownmedia.com. She can also be contacted at 1-818-533-8463 or contact Louise Hicks at www. Dot Louise Hicks dot biz. She can also be contacted at 1-562-310-1495. Allow yourself to be seen by the global masses and allow your business to shine and grow because of the global masses. It's Small Business Monday, courtesy of Aim to Purpose, the radio show.
Okay, um, we're back, and we're back talking today with uh, Anne and Jane Esselstyn. This is a continuation of our show from last week, uh, Forks Over Knives, Part 2, Heart Healthy Cooking. And they have um, just written this cookbook called The Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. And this cookbook is dynamic, I will tell you. And we had a caller that had a question, and we're going to ask the caller if you're still listening. We were not able to get the call right uh, when you called, and I guess we got the lines got uh, disconnected. So can you please call back, caller, and uh, we will hopefully get to connect you because I take it you have a question for Ann and Jane. So caller, please call us right back, and we'll be able to get your call. I have got one thing I have to tell you about if I have a minute. Yes. Oh, sure. Go ahead. We, you know how everybody loves hot dogs? Yes. Well, we've got the perfect solution. It's a carrot dog. Tell me what page it's on. And it's on page <laughs> 66, 67. Well, let me see. I it's saw that so one. Fun. I and saw the is, carrot dog, too. It's a carrot about the size of a hot dog, and you boil it. Yep. For 10 minutes until it's hot dog soft, <laughs> and then I put liquid smoke on it and put it in a panini machine or on a grill so it gets a little mark. Grill. And, yeah, and then you can put sauerkraut and maybe cook spinach, ketchup and mustard, and it, you wouldn't know it wasn't the best hot dog ever. There's always an alternative to the norm. And here it is right yeah, here, right. the the as, carrot as hot dog. As, as she's showing it on the screen here. I, I okay. saw it, and I People said, wow. So many pictures of their carrot dogs. They are so proud of them. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I hilarious. believe it. I believe it. I'm looking at the picture now. And, and this, this food just... I mean, it, it just looks good, and it's good. Um, I, I mean, because I like carrots, and I'm sure that it's good. I love carrots. And just briefly, we talked about, uh, before we left the show, about uh, before we went to the break, rather, uh, the nuts and the avocados. Now, I know in certain instances you were saying that nuts and avocados would be okay, and but if you have heart disease, you are advising to stay away from them. Is that what uh, we want That's to impart? Correct. And certainly if you want to lose weight, it's a huge help to get rid of those nuts and avocado because that all your high calorie, I mean, mm -hmm. lots of high calorie. And, and when I say in our other cookbooks, and um, like Engine 2 and My Beef with Meat, those books, it isn't like you're having a cup of nuts along with lunch. We're talking about, you know, you have just, you know, a peanut butter on, on a sandwich, that, that amount. You're not going to have it off a spoonful. You're not going to have a handful after handful of nuts or, you know, 16 avocados smashed into your sandwich. We're just talking reasonable, single serving, you know, one ounce servings of these things because people oftentimes jump onto the nut avocado bandwagon when they think that they're they think they're missing out on something. That's right. And it's just, you know, stop. You're just going to keep the fat because those are really high in saturated fat. And you can if you if you have the tendency or the proclivity towards type 2 diabetes or obesity, you're not going to be changing those things, turning them around if you have a, you know, if you've replaced and more than replaced things with avocados and nuts. And, right. and with that, we, we do have a caller uh, calling in. Uh, caller, are you there? State your name and where you're calling from. Uh, this is Paulette Wench from Gardena, California. Paulette, hello. Hi, hi Paulette. <laughs> How are you doing, Kenan and Louise? We are wonderful, yeah. and thank you for calling in. Oh. You have a question or comment? Uh, well, I have a comment. As you both know, I am type 2 diabetes and uh, I've had uh, triple bypass open heart surgery so these uh, the menus and the diets are of special uh, importance to me but I was having a problem hearing the show I left a message I had a technical difficulty so I haven't been able to hear a lot of it so um, I'll just continue for now oh yeah and all of our shows are archived on YouTube uh, on YouTube under Aim to Purpose Radio. 
So if okay. you're having a problem with getting uh, the show, don't uh, no worries because all are archived and also here at Global Voice Broadcasting Network where we're coming to you live from Hollywood, California. The shows are on the uh, aim to purpose uh, gvbradio.com forward slash aimed to purpose as well as stitcher.com and uh, iTunes and other outlets. So go on YouTube later tonight or tomorrow and uh, we hope to have the show out there. If not, just log on, like I said, gvbradio.com forward slash aimed to purpose and you can see the show uh, there on Ustream. But now, before we go further, I have a video since we've talked about all of these things and we want people to see uh, this video because I think this video will help you to understand the importance of what you're eating and the foods and the things that you're putting into your body. And let's show this video right quick and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the greens. Uh, because we do want to stress the importance of eating greens. And I have a couple of recipes I want to show you that I like that I'm going to be making. <laughs> so let's watch the video right quick. All right. Consumer news tonight. When it comes to meat, the USDA seal is required to prove that the meat has been inspected by a federal agency. But what many consumers may not know is that some meat has actually been treated with carbon monoxide gas in order to keep it looking fresh for weeks. Kitty Pilgrim has more. Red fresh meat, or is it? Congressional hearings pointed to the pitfalls of treating meat with carbon monoxide. Treating meat with carbon monoxide allows the meat to keep its freshly ground red color, even though the meat may have spoiled. I have a picture on the screen. There's two packages of ground meat that were left out at room temperature for 27 hours. You can see the one which was treated with carbon monoxide looks fresh and red, while the other meat has turned brown and quite nasty looking. Congressman Stupak and Congressman Ed Markey have introduced legislation that would require meat treated with carbon monoxide to be labeled so the consumer would know. According to the industry, two-thirds of all meat and chicken is no longer cut by a butcher in front of customers or in back of the supermarket case. Now, pre-packaged, case-ready meat is prepared off-site at large distributors and then shipped to supermarkets. The carbon monoxide treatment keeps meat looking fresh in that process. Food experts say a pound of ground beef cut by a butcher goes brown in four to five days. But meat treated with carbon monoxide by a meat packer can stay looking fresh fresh for weeks. It's the same with imported seafood. Congressman Stupak says his subcommittee tested seafood from China and Vietnam treated with carbon monoxide. 20% turned out to be bad and was refused. It's a problem because consumers aren't informed about how meat is treated. The meat is being treated w with chemicals so that it's going to look like it's fresher than it is. I think consumers have a right to know how fresh their meat is. Industry representatives of large meat packers say the additive is harmless and it's easy to tell when the product goes bad. Kitty Pilgrim, Sienna. Well, all right. All right. Well, we wanted to share that with you because we wanted to, to just help the consumers to be aware. Like we, it's kind of like anything. You, as a consumer, we need to be informed and we need to be aware, particularly what we're putting in our bodies, because uh, it can lead to all kinds of diseases. And to eat appropriately and correctly will be a great help. And we were talking that we wanted to go back to talk about the greens. And I know I grew up on greens, collard greens, because we used to raise them. As I said, I grew up in Louisiana. We grew up on collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, and cabbage, and all kinds of, of green leafy. We had even a wild green we used to go out and eat. I don't know whether you all have heard of this one, Anne and uh, Jane, but poke salad, have you ever heard of that? It's a wild green that we used to eat as kids growing up, and we knew exactly what, what to called? eat. What, I couldn't hear you. What's it called? It's called polk, P-O-L-K, salad. I think that's how you. Mm -hmm. It's a green, leafy. I don't even know whether it's still available back there, but as a kid growing up in Louisiana, we would eat that, and it was so good the way they would steam it for us. So there, there's mm -hmm. we ate lots of greens growing up. 
And I think that helped uh, to stay healthy. So, and you have mm -hmm. in this book, I wanted to share because when I saw about the greens and knowing how I grew up on greens, there are sandwiches here with greens. And I saw how you took this recipe called Lovely Collard Sushi. <laughs> and I yeah. love that. And I wanted to show And that. I'm a big sushi fan. Now, that's such a great idea because... You take the collard and you use it as if it were a bread wrap. Yes. So it yes. becomes your bread or your nori sheath, if you know. Yeah. Right. Yes. And it looks so and, appealing. And I'm showing it here on the screen now, and I'm going to move it down now. So, so you it. so you use the, uh, the, the, the actual collard green as the wrap as opposed to the seaweed. Exactly, exactly. But you have to steam it so it's flexible. You've done it right. a couple seconds. Just 30 seconds or less. Oh, oh. 10 seconds. I think 10 seconds. 10, 10, 10. Sorry. <laughs> 10, 10. And, it makes it, and it makes it so that it, it doesn't break. Right, it, it, right. Yeah, it's, it softens it so you can... what you love. That's right. But that's yeah. right. Let me ask... This is sort of our base in there. Let me ask, let me ask, let me ask you to this. But um, there's another sandwich. Hey, Angie, like, oh, sorry. Let, <laughs> it's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Let me ask you to this. We just had a caller that uh, mentioned about having a uh, triple bypass uh, surgery. Do, will this diet work for people that are on the verge of having to have these type of surgeries will it clean out the four chambers of the heart or 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 i tell i mean uh or will they have to go and have these type of surgeries or will this plant-based diet clear out those pipes as well um well to use your terms this diet will definitely clear out their pipes it takes for some people no time for some people you know, it's been built up and it's calcified it's a little harder to get it cleared out. Right. And it's not the, it's not the chambers of their heart that are filled necessarily. It's the vessels. Okay. Um, the arterial walls surrounding the vessels. Okay. And you can feel it sometimes in your, in the heart that's called angina when you've got, you know, this lack of oxygen getting, the lack of blood getting to, to the heart tissue itself. Right. You can feel it in your legs. It's um, inter intermittent claudication. Some people have it. And um, I always joke, because being a sex ed teacher, I'm always talking about, you know, your head, your toes, your nose, and your hose. Right. So, but some people <laughs> Viagra, that's the whole issue. That's right. That's blood flow because the artery is clogged. That's right. So some people see a reversal when they get um, function of their private parts again. That's right. Um, so it's, it is amazing how you can see the rever results quickly. If someone is literally having a heart attack, they shouldn't say, you know, don't cut me open, I'm going to start eating broccoli. Right. Um, they need to take care of themselves immediately. I mean, they do need, you know, that's, that is incredibly important to take care of themselves right then and there. Right. But if someone has, knows that they have symptoms and they know they're heading down this path, they can definitely turn things around. There yes. There are thousands and thousands of stories of this reversal. Oh, yes. That's why it's called prevent and reverse That's right. Disease. That's right. Oh, yes. Be because we, again, we live in a society that has, it's in the collective consciousness that there is no cure for anything here. And with, oh. when, when, when you have a diet like this that's plant-based and raw, which is how the human being is designed to... Oh, we're uh, not raw. We're not raw, by the way. We're not raw. It, uh, well, even if you cook, your, uh, cook a plant-based diet... Or whether it's raw, this is still uh, uh, it still goes against the paradigm that says that there is no uh, cure. We know the body is uh, able to heal itself. Everyone should know yeah. this, uh, but it's it constantly it, it, healing every day. That's the right. He's always re repairing. And one of the, the the magic things is for somebody who has got really severe heart disease. My he may have told you on the show. He asked them to eat leafy greens six times a day. Right. And it, uh, it, it is quite remarkable what it, what it does for people. It's, it's like it's medicine. That is remarkable. Amazing. And, and you know, the thing is, it's so many, there's so, we have so many ideas in this book of ways to get greens into your diet, whether it's a kale sandwich which is unbelievably delicious. Right. Or, or putting kale in your, in your pasta sauce, in your marinara before you put it on your pasta. Right. Or put kale in your pasta sauce before you put the pasta sauce on your pizza. So you have all that green already 
in your pasta sauce. So you have a, and, a um, multitude of, of options to, to get these uh, type of nutrients versus uh, you, what, what many people do. They will take uh, an isolated uh, supplement such as a vitamin C supplement or, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. or, or things like that food. when they can get an entire array of, of vitamins and minerals from eating the food. And I tell you, and the you get book, the water, and you get the fiber, and you get yes. the nutrients. And the, <laughs> you and get you all of that. Everything and you're supposed to get. Mother Nature got it right. It That's sure right. did. Mother Nature definitely got it right. And all these synthetic yeah. drugs, are, they are wiping out what how Mother Nature intended for our body to function. And that's why we're coming up with all of these diseases. But the book, it <laughs> says over 125 delicious, life-changing, plant-based recipes. And believe me, there are all kinds of recipes in this book. I've gone through it. I've looked at it. I would encourage anyone to get the book. There's potatoes, uh, recipes, uh, soup recipes, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all kinds of just beautiful, wonderful, edible recipes that you can get. And tell us how, because we have about five minutes left, how can one get the book and how? Uh, well, most, most, anywhere. most bookstores, anywhere. Amazon, uh, books, most bookstores should carry it. We were number one on Amazon and Heart Health for a good long stretch this fall. Oh, so I believe exciting. it. <laughs> well, I and got no, mine. I, I want to say one thing, and that is it's very confusing for people because they go out there and they suddenly hear, oh, you sh you've got to eat a lot of fat. That's what's good for you. Or you have got to eat nuts. That is the key. But the thing about my husband's program is that he has scientifically proven with science that this works and um, one of uh, one of our patients sent a little comment that I like a lot and I think it's helpful and this patient said this program is an anchor in the midst of a raging sea of ideas that don't really work I feel planted as I maintain its regime and it, you know if you stick to this if you avoid the things that we suggest and then just eat all those greens and all those beans and all whole grains, you will thrive. And, and that is so true, and that reminds me of something uh, I think I brought it out last week. And for those listeners, if you missed the show last week, we had Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn, Jr. on the show, and his book, Prevent and reverse heart disease. We talked and went into a lot of uh, details about his scientifically proven uh, facts on how to prevent or reverse uh, and or reverse heart disease. And if you missed that show, it's on YouTube under Aim to Purpose Radio. By all means, go and watch as we discussed with Dr. Esselstein. So now I have a question. We know you have the plant-based program. How does one get in touch with you to get involved in the program so that they can become healthier? You don't need to be in touch with us. You just need to go to the grocery store and start cooking and eating. <laughs> and just start cooking well, and eating. Right. That's yeah. it. Well, my husband uh, does it once a month, has a program through the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Institute. For patients. I mean, people and who for patients. Need and, information. And he also has a website. It's called it's Dr. Esselstyn, E-S-S-E-L-S-T-Y-N.com. Yes. That uh, uh, there's a telephone number there for his secretary if he if if uh, anybody needs to get in touch and repeat that website again dr esselston.com that's spelled esselston e s s is in sam e l s is in sam t y n and is that spelled out the doctor or is it dr 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like, it looks like Dresselston. Like right. Dr. Esselston. Dr. com. So just and go also, to it. If people, if sometimes people like to have visuals, and we're on Instagram. It's just Dr. Esselston. Um, if you search that on Instagram, you'll get it. And people send in all kinds of pictures. Oh yeah. Amazing meals they've made. I've I've been on the their own twist. I've been on Dr. Esselston's website. There's plenty of information and YouTube clips of his interviews. Yeah. Uh, uh, t uh, I've I've seen his TED talk and I've seen uh, uh, um, uh, Rip Esselstyn's TED talks as well. Yes, uh, great. So we're uh, on our website too. We're on the uh, um, right hand side on the about. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I that, tell you, with our book, Louise and Ken, you both are amazing 
and we have the feeling you're going to thrive along with that little 10 month old. Five month old. Uh, five, five month old. <laughs> five month old. Yes, five months old. I'm mixing you up. We have a 10 month old. There you go. There you go. Yes, and <laughs> congratulations on your 10 month old. And I, I, I know that we say, and uh, I remember the documentary Forks Over Knives, we, it was saying one fourth of what we eat benefits us, and three fourths of what we eat benefits our doctors. So that's a thought that we really, as consumers, <laughs> need to think about. Out because we need to be reversing that and let the three that's fours. Right. Well, actually, we want the whole to benefit us because it's that's our body right, yeah. that's at stake here. Mm -hmm. And we want to live longer and not only just live longer, we want to live healthier so we don't have to be a walking medicine cabinet. So, uh, with us, so the thing to do is to start out and eat oats some way or another every day for breakfast for three reasons. Do I have time to tell you? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> a final thought, and then we're going to have to close. Out. Oats. Okay, oats, because they help lower your cholesterol, because they help decrease inflammation, and because the more oats you eat, they're dose responsive and you get a better reaction. That's right. Wow. So you can't eat oats in some way or other. Yes, yes. So start there. There you go. And, and you add the greens. There you and, go. And you must get this book. I tell you, both books, the Dr. Esselstyn's Pre Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. I have them both. I got mine on Amazon, but just go online and you can get them because it, it's a life-changing uh, situation that we have here with the, how diseases are running rampant in our country here. And we really need to get healthier and stop taking all the pills and medications. And with that being said, uh, we thank you both, Jane and Ann, for coming on the show. and. Uh, uh, we look forward. Maybe we'll have you. Maybe you'll write another book, and we'll have you back. And Dr. Esselstyn, maybe you, with all Louise. the things Thank he's you. doing, Thank and have a have a good evening. Bye. 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 All right. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. And there they go. And f just a final uh, thought before we have my mom say her famous uh, closing remark: being healthy. Uh, being healthy is to be the. It, it was designed to be the easiest thing in the world for all of us. Everything that we've ever needed for health has been provided for us by the great creator. Man has created everything that creates illness for us. And uh, so and then it it's harder for uh, for people to get on track for, to be healthy. Uh, so take some of the notes from uh, the Esselstyn family. It's good information. It's great information. And with that being said, excellent information. With that being said, the books, here they are again. This one, the cookbook. This one with Dr. Esselstyn, all the medical information as well as some recipes. And with that being said, we want you to have a good week. Eat healthy. And remember, your power lies within you. Let it loose. Until next week. <laughs>